Welcome back to Letterman Road, ladies and gentlemen. We're wrapping up tight ends week. It's been an interesting week. There's a lot of storylines for the tight ends room, but a lot of unknowns as well. So it's been kind of, though I, I would say the water's been murky, but we're covering tight ends this week and that's okay. We're going to do offensive line next week and then we'll flip over to the defensive side of the ball. We can't get out of tight ends week though, without getting the 41 year vet Tim May, his opinion on maybe a, a bold prediction, maybe a, a mild prediction. We don't know yet. We'll see what he has in store. Andy Backstrom, we'll get a prediction from him and then I'll make one to bring up the rear and see if I can concoct one after these two take both of my predictions that I've already got stewing around in this head of mine. Tim, we'll ask you first, since Andy went first on the last video. Tim, what's your prediction here? You got a bold prediction for these Ohio State tight ends? Yeah, I think G. Scott Jr. is ready to blossom as a uh, pass-catching, uh, uh, field-stretching dude for this offense. It could be that, the you know, it's the one thing that they need from these guys when defenses get fired up about stopping the receivers and the running backs. And uh, I think G. Scott Jr. is the guy who's go going to – because I think he's the most ready to play, followed, followed extremely closely by Will Kaczmarek. But I think uh, G. Scott, G. Scott Jr. is going to catch, I'm going to say, 25 passes this year minimum uh, and, and push the 500-yard uh, uh, yard barrier. Okay, that's a pretty bold prediction. I, I I like that, Tim. I'm proud of you there. That you, you know, sometimes they're a little mild. That one's pretty bold. It's a little Thank spicy. You. Something I might not order on the restaurant at a Fiesta Mariachi here in here down south of Columbus, but uh, it's it's a little bold. You know, it's it's kind of spicy. Andy, you got one for me? Uh, I have three small ones. Uh, one is fun. one is really quirky. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that Pat. Wait, 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 wait. We could do three. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm giving Andy the pass because he's always stuck to the one rule. Yeah. You and I, Tim, venture away from that all the time. So this is the only time we're going to give Andy a chance to, to to really shine here and give him some a few different predictions. I promise these will be fun. I, I'm saying Patrick Gerd will have a fake punt conversion. We saw Mitch Rossi, who, by the way, is the, the role model for Patrick Gerd. He's talked about that before, the inspiration, walk on to tight end slash fullback. Mitch Rossi had a couple chances in the 2022 season of having a fake punt conversion. Didn't get quite get the opportunity to fully, you know, make that happen. But I'm saying that Pat Gerd gets one this season. I'm also saying that five different tight ends have five plus catches. I don't know if one gets to 25 like you're saying, Tim, with G, but I think that five will have at least five catches. And I'm saying that Jelani Thurman will have three touchdown receptions, which I don't know if that's bold to some people because some people might think he's going to have like 10 or something. But I feel like that's bold given everything we talked about in our video earlier this week and given the fact that he had two total catches uh, last year. Wow, that's – that's interesting. I, I, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong because then I'd have to tell you three different times that you're wrong. Um, hmm. Yeah. This is this is tough for me. Um, I think. I think three different tight ends will have three touchdown grabs. Because I think they're going to use the tight ends in everyday offense. If you know what I'm saying, like down to down, they're just going to use a lot of the tight ends. You're going to get a lot of leak action. I think. Uh, like we talked about, I talked about him on Wednesday, Greg Dulcich at, at, at UCLA. Chip Kelly was a master of getting that guy open, just leaking him out. Um, you know, you don't really know where he's at until he's in the end zone. Um, and it's not like they're just going to abandon that offense when they're up 49 to three on Akron or when they're up 52 to, to 10 on Western Michigan. Um, and, and, you know, tight ends can, can find ways to get open against first team offenses. Imagine them against second and third team guys when the Buckeyes are, are running a total up on, on some poor non-con opponent. So, you know, whether that's Jelani Thurman or even a Max LeBlanc, who I think early in the year could get a good amount of run um, to get him ready for the future at, as one of the, the big time tight ends. Um, you know, I think Will Kaczmarek and G Scott speak for themselves. And I think that they'll each get three touchdowns. So if I just need one of those other guys to have three touchdowns in garbage time, throughout the season. And I think there's going to be like the 2019 season, a lot of garbage time for this team because they're going to run, run up pretty good totals on a lot of different teams. So I'll take three different touchdowns, three different tight ends with three touchdown catches 
And, you know, maybe that's not the boldest, um, but it does require you to get, get your hands on some footballs there in garbage time for some of these guys. Tim, go ahead. I agree. And uh, I think what Chip Kelly is really good at is trying to give future defenses, opposing defenses, things to worry about, things to consider. Uh, and that's why, like you just said, it might be garbage time to some, but he's going to make uh, – He's going to try to make silk purses out of garbage, I think, from the standpoint of worrying uh, future opposing defenses on what could be coming from a two tight end set or one tight end set, or maybe look, looking like a, I call it, the, you know, the the modern day, um, the modern the modern day full house, you know, which you saw him jump into, for example, uh, the the robust T. You saw him jump into, for example, in the spring game, uh, incorporating probably a tight end in that group um, as the fullback. So, I mean, there are going to be opportunities for tight ends, and some of it may be on a deception scale, like Andy's talking about, about leaking into the, leaking into the, in the end zone. And you guys were talking about, about, uh, you know, just giving, mainly giving other defenses stuff to consider while you're also considering the primary weapons in this offense, which are the wide receivers and the running backs and possibly, oh, are you kidding me? A running quarterback. So uh, the tight ends could play. Here's the thing. I think Chip Kelly is a smart enough offensive coordinator. He's going to take what a defense gives him in a preparation sense. And if he sees a weakness there, like a lot of NFL coaches do, he's going to he's going to exploit it. And there will be a lot of opportunities to exploit possible mismatches with your tight ends against defenses and the way they're deployed. So I know that's a long way of saying it, but uh, the more I think about it, we may see more tight end usage instead of less, you know, in this, in this situation. Yeah. Pick your three game stretch here where Chip Kelly toys with defenses, Akron, Western Michigan and Marshall. And then in November, the build up to, to, you know, Michigan is Purdue at Northwestern and Indiana. I mean, you, you don't ask for two, three game stretches like that. Um, and that that's the opportunity where I think these tight ends could get even more involved because it gives those no. guys uh, on the staff and in the meeting rooms an opportunity to uh, kind of mess with opposing coordinators of big time opponents that are getting ready to play. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And, uh, you know, I think Chip Kelly's got a little bit of an edge from a, I'm not going to call it ego, but boy, wouldn't he like to exploit tight ends against Iowa? You know what I mean? <laughs> when you consider Iowa and its lineage and, and uh, some of the things it's done with tight ends, especially against Ohio State way back when in one of the more cataclysmic games ever in terms of a team's uh, uh, wish to get, you know, to be big time. But the bottom line is I, 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 Chip Kelly will do things, I think, just to show, hey, we can do this. You know, that's that's kind of like I think his approach in some respects. Andy, any closing thoughts before we put the, uh, the bookend on this tight end week? Yeah, I mean, Chip Kelly is a big part of this equation, but I think – ultimately it comes down to Keenan Bailey and how he wants to manage this unit. And, you know, how is he splitting up that workload? Because last year I felt like, you know, at times we're waiting for G Scott to maybe have more of a role early in the season. He had a couple of clutch conversions, third and fourth down. And then, you know, as the season went on with the exception of that Rutgers game where he really was the tight end one, he didn't get a whole lot of work in the passing game. He, he did spring some big runs in the blocking department, but, it's going to come down to Keaton Bailey and how much he wants to be able to spread out these snaps. And, you know, if it's something where only two or three guys are really ready to be able to push Ohio state forward and help them win games, then we're not going to be right on a lot of these predictions. Right. And things are going to look different. And, and maybe, you know, G Scott, I guess Tim prediction maybe would be right in that situation. Maybe G Scott follows in the footsteps of Kate Stover, but, I will say as, as we've joked about, and as I've learned being on this beat uh, tight ends at Ohio state, have a knack for making big plays in, in big games when they're not expected to. And you're going to have a chance for more big games in an expanded playoff. So maybe that's where we see some of these guys make a difference when we're not expecting them to, even if they don't in the regular season, if there's an opportunity in the Big Ten championship game, and then, of course, in the playoff games ensuing, maybe that's when some of these predictions come true. It'll be interesting to watch because, again – there's a lot of stretches where Ohio State can toy with defenses, put things on film, and I think a lot of that does involve tight ends. It really does. And, Tim, I think you know the points that you made there are well well spoken. I will take them 
put them in maybe the back of my brain. So when we're watching these non-conference games and that November stretch, that's going to be a little brutal. Um, maybe we'll see some tight end action that we haven't seen all year uh, in preparation for that Oregon game or that Iowa game or Michigan. So we'll have to see, but we won't know until we know. But what we do know is we're wrapping up tight ends week. Andy back from the middle of your screen, Tim may on the other side of your screen. I'm just Spencer Holbrook. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the tight ends predictions. We, we, we absolutely love doing these predictions. Tight ends is no different. We'll see you guys over at lettermanrow.com. We'll continue to cover tight ends the way we do every week. And then we're going to move on to offensive line week. I know that's a big one. Everybody wants to, to, to talk offensive line. How's it going to shake out? If you have a question for the, for the crew here, put it in the Letterman Lounge the message board. Go there. $1 for your first two months. That's right. $1 for your first two months. Put a question in that offensive line question thread. We'll get it answered on the site. For Andy, for Tim, I'm Spencer. We're going to get out of here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys over at LettermanRow.com.